Today I'm going to show you guys how to install the Ender 6 LCD upgrade kit from TH3D Studio. Let's get to it. Like a lot of the Creality printers, the Ender 6 comes with a touchscreen LCD. While these may look pretty and they're appealing to novice users, once you start getting more well-versed into 3D printing, you're going to want to get in and start messing with the printer and changing settings to get better print quality. And one of the things that happens is you quickly realize that these screens are very limited because they block out and don't give you access to a lot of the settings that you get with a traditional 12864 LCD. So what we did is we came up with this conversion kit that makes it easy to put this on. You can use the stock board. And we've also made firmware to go along with this to make the upgrade very simple and quick. So we're gonna go through all the steps today to show you guys how to install this kit. And I'm also going to cover at the end all the different options that you get with the new LCD that allow you to have more control over your printer. So I'm gonna show you how to install it right now. So when you purchase the Ender 6 LCD conversion kit, this is what you'll get with it. You've got the screws for the LCD itself. These are to secure the screen into the housing and also will secure the housing to the printer on these two screw holes here. The LCD will come with two cables, but you actually only need one and then the knob for the LCD itself. The first thing we need to do is install the LCD into the housing. If you flip the housing over, you will see we have four screw holes. This is where the LCD will install. And all you need to install this is a Phillips screwdriver. Once you have your Phillips screwdriver, take the LCD and insert it into the housing. And make sure you have the holes in the LCD itself lined up with the holes in the actual housing. Then take one of the included screws and put it in each of the four corners. So you can see here, I have all four screws installed and the LCD should self align itself into the LCD housing cutout. The last thing we need to do is put the knob on and you just press it on like so, and it should fit just like this. So this is our fully assembled LCD housing. Your LCD may have a protective film over it. Go ahead and peel that off. And here's our completed housing. So the first step we need to do before we turn the printer over is take these two screws out of here. So now with the printer on its side, we're going to go ahead and take these two screws out. This will release the LCD housing from the printer frame. Then take the LCD and pull it off and disconnect the speaker wire and the serial connection. So now we have the LCD removed and disconnected. We need to take these eight screws off the bottom panel so we can get into the actual bottom of the printer to connect the new LCD. Now that we have the eight screws removed, go ahead and take the bottom panel off. And at this point, we're going to go through installing the LCD onto the printer and then reconnecting the wires for the new LCD and disconnecting the old ones. So now with the bottom panel removed, we need to disconnect the stock LCD cable. Now it's up to you if you want to completely remove this cable or just leave it in here. It's no longer going to be needed with the new LCD. So go ahead and pull the cable down into the bottom of the printer housing. So you can see we have the speaker line and the actual LCD line pulled into the housing. Take the cable that came with the LCD kit and feed it through the hole here and plug the end into the board where the original cable went. So the next step is we take our assembled LCD housing and we have three connectors on the LCD board. 
There's EXP one, two, and three. We want to plug the cable that we just fed into number three. So go ahead and align the tab of the cable with the housing connector and plug it in just like that. Now, before you put the LCD housing onto the printer, if you're going to use a USB cable, go ahead and feed that through. I'm gonna go ahead and feed it through the bottom of the machine here and out through the USB cutout. And then snap the housing onto the printer. If you are using a USB cable, go ahead and plug it into the board on its USB port, which can be found right next to the ribbon cable for the SD card, right down here. Now that we have the LCD housing on the printer, the LCD connected to the cable, and if you're going to use a USB, we have that connected. So we're going to take the two screws that we took off the stock LCD and put them through the new one and go ahead and screw those in. And then we have to put the two rear screws in and you're going to use the included screws that came with the kit. So now that we have these screws in the LCD housing, we're going to go ahead and put the cover back on with the screws that we took out. Just make sure to put it on the correct direction. The mesh here goes on the inside of the printer. And you can see the cutout here for the Z motor. I'll usually get a couple of them started by hand. Just makes it easier to install. So now we have the LCD installed and the printer is all back together. We need to go to our help center and download the firmware, which is support.th3dstudio.com. We're going to go ahead and head to downloads, select Creality under the Unified 2 firmware section. And then we're going to look for the Ender 6 firmware here for the 4.3x board and go ahead and download this. Once you have the file downloaded, go ahead and open it and extract it to a folder on your computer. And we're going to go ahead and load this in VS Code. So I'm going to go ahead and extract this now. And when you open the folder in VS Code, you wanna make sure that you're opening the firmware folder, not the Marlin folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the firmware folder, copy this path, and then we're gonna open that in Visual Studio Code. So now that Visual Studio Code is open, go ahead and click Open Folder. Paste in the path we copied earlier. And then hit select folder. Once you do that, it's going to open up. What we want to do then is click Marlin on the left here and open configuration.h. Double click that and you will be presented with a bunch of different options. Now for this printer, we want to go ahead and uncomment the Ender 6 V431 board line. And I do already have the Easy ABL on this printer, so I'm going to go ahead and tell it I have the Easy ABL by uncommenting the Ender 6 OEM mount. If you do not have an Easy ABL, you do not uncomment this. This is only because my Ender 6 has the Easy ABL on here. Now, if you are using the Ender 6, the only way to use our firmware is with this LCD kit. We do not support the stock touchscreen because it is a closed source screen and we can't get all the features that the screen we're installing on here gives you. So go ahead and save your changes by doing a control S and we're going to hit the little checkbox in the lower left hand corner to build the firmware. This may take anywhere from 30 seconds up to 10 minutes depending on the speed of your computer and your internet connection. It's going to go ahead and download software from GitHub to install the libraries it needs and then it will go ahead and compile the firmware. So we'll come back once this firmware is done I'll show you how to actually get the firmware onto the printer with the SD card. So you can see here the compile finished. You'll know it successfully compiled if you see success down here at the bottom. So go ahead and put your SD card into your computer. And if there's anything on the SD card, you want to delete it and you want to make sure the SD card is formatted with the FAT32 file system. If it's not, go ahead and format it with the FAT32 file system. If you want to be safe, just go ahead and make sure your allocation unit size is 4096 bytes. 
and you can do a quick format and go ahead and format the SD card. This will ensure that you don't have any issues with the board pulling it in. The bootloader on this board will only read FAT32 formatted or FAT formatted cards. To get the actual firmware onto the SD card, we want to go ahead and go into PIO, build, STM32 F103 RET6 Creality, and you'll see there is a firmware.bin file. This file has to be a different name every single time you flash. When you compile it, it will generate a new name based off of the current time and date. So in theory, you should always have a different file name. If your firmware is not flashing, it could be that you're using the same file name. I just wanted to point this out because it can cause some confusion if your firmware is not updating. So I have my SD card here opened. I'm going to go ahead and grab the latest firmware bin file here. And we're going to go ahead and drag it over to the SD card. And then we're going to go ahead and put this into the printer. So we're going to go ahead and turn the printer on. And I'm going to show you guys that without the firmware installed, we're just going to get a blank LCD. This is normal. You're not going to get any display until we update the firmware. So go ahead and turn the printer off. And we're going to take our SD card and put it into the SD slot. With the card with the firmware in the SD slot, we're going to go ahead and turn the printer back on. And it will take anywhere from 10 to 12 seconds, roughly, to update. Once the firmware updates, you'll see the TH3D logo pop up on the screen. So with the new firmware installed, I want you to go ahead and reset your EEPROM. You can do this by pressing the menu, going to configuration, scrolling all the way to the bottom, select reset EEPROM, and then hit reset. You'll hear a confirmation beep and it'll say settings stored. We want to do this anytime we update firmware on any printer. This will clear out any old options. Now with this firmware, you also get EEPROM support on the actual processor itself and it doesn't need an SD card to store EEPROM settings like the stock firmware does. So at this point we're done, you can go ahead and test it by doing an auto home. And this will home your X, Y, and Z. So right now the printer's homing. You can also go ahead and make sure the preheat works. And we have two preheat settings. We have one for ABS and PLA. And you can do both the bed and the hot end at the same time or individually. We're going to go ahead and do them at the same time. You can see here we have our target temperature for the bed and the hot end and where they're currently at. So everything's functioning correctly. I'm going to just go through some additional settings here that we have now that we have this new LCD, one of those being the baby stepping. So if at any time you need to adjust your Z height while you're printing, you can go ahead and press the button twice and you will get the baby stepping menu. This is available whether you have an ABL probe installed or not, and you can just turn the knob and it will adjust the nozzle height in real time as you make these adjustments. It's a very useful feature. In the configuration menu, we've got a lot of other options. We've got an option to turn the filament sensor on and off if you're having issues with it. You can set your PLA and ABS preheat configs. You can store your EEPROM settings here. You can also modify your Z offset options right in this menu. And if we go into advanced, you'll see we have access to change our velocity, acceleration, jerk, steps per millimeter. And we even have an option to do PID tuning. So you can actually PID tune your hot end right from the printer's LCD here. These are the stock values that come with the firmware. If you want to go ahead and tune your specific hot end, you can press the button here, dial in the target temperature you want to tune at, and then press the button. And it's going to say PID auto tune, and it will automatically start doing cycles and then set the new settings. This is one of the main advantages with these LCDs is you have a lot more options in the firmware at your disposal because this LCD is being driven directly from the board and not its own standalone system. So we have a lot more options in here. We have a lot more ease of use. And that's all there is to installing this upgrade. You can go ahead and start printing with this just like you would any other printer. So just to recap, the process is you remove your stock LCD, mount ours into the housing, mount the housing to the printer, connect all the cables, and then update the firmware. After that, you can 
print with the printer the same way you did before. If you're using an auto bed leveling system like the Easy ABL or BL Touch, that is also supported in the firmware. So adding an auto bed leveling system to your Ender 6 is fairly easy. And you also then get full control over your sensor and you also get the baby stepping. In my opinion, the best feature that putting these LCDs on the printers gives you is access to the live baby stepping feature. It makes getting your first layer down super easy and takes a lot of the pain out of trying to manually level the bed while you're doing a print to get that perfect first layer. If you wanna upgrade your Ender 6 with this LCD kit, there's a link in the video description. We appreciate your guys' support. I hope you guys learned something, and as always, happy printing.